Previously on a Mets of Fun a Time a Bad Movie Show. You shot me. You actually shot me. Should Satan be killed, his killer shall be responsible for all satanic duties until such time as a suitable Satan can be appointed. Oh, I get it. It's like the Santa Claus. And uh, now. So you're Satan. It's not all it's cracked up to be. It's kind of hard work maintaining nine levels of pain and torture. Although, level one, as it turns out, is just kind of a lit-ass party full of, like, drinking and premarital sex and smoking weed. It's so cool. Uh, level two is where I send people who aren't really evil. They're just annoying. Oof. Being surrounded by annoying people sounds like the worst punishment. You've never been to level eight. What's in level eight? Anyways, level three is just massively uncomfortable. It's a balmy 109 all the time, and occasionally I go down there and show them films from Satan's personal collection. What movies does he have? You'll never believe. Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> yeah, it's funny for like the first two movies, and then you just want to kill yourself. So just like Adam Sandler. Uh, hey. hey, quick question. What's that smell? Goats. People keep sacrificing goats. I don't want goats. I want beer. Sacrifice beer, damn it. Gross. Well, I mean, one dude got drunk, burned down a goat, and sacrificed a church, but that only happened once. So, not good then. No, not at all. And of course I came down here during the solstice, our busiest time of the year. Although it could be worse. Really? Yeah, I can think of at least ten other Satans, Hells, and Demons that are doing worse than I am. I am the god of Hellfire, and I bring you... Fire! Constantine is a film that deals extensively with the balance between good and bad. And they're dedicated to it because for everything that works in this movie, something else doesn't. The angst is dialed up ridiculously high, like most comic book movies from this era, and Shia LaBeouf's character is totally useless, made even worse by him being Shia LaBeouf. Still, of the comic book movies on this list, it's by far the best. And while I could call out Peter Stormare's bizarre performance as Satan, the fact that Hell looks like a level from Fallout 3 and is about as well rendered, or this demon who I swear to god looks like Donald Trump Jr. I'm not even trying to make a cheap shot here, he genuinely just looks like Donald Trump Jr. But no, the demon that takes the number 10 spot is the man made of bugs. Talk about a useless villain. What type of demon can be defeated by being splattered on a dude's windshield? Because, yeah, that's what happens. He's not even all bugs, there's a couple snakes and apparently a crab in there? Is this character considered a threat in the comics? Because I can't help but laugh at this. Bonus points to the demon Keanu Reeves' fucking sucker punches. This is Constantine. John Constantine. Asshole. Hello! It's me, the devil! I stand for all that is bad. <laughs> the final sacrifice. Rest in peace, Bruce J. Mitchell. I hope they have beer on the sun. I mean, heaven. He's not down here, right? Yeah, how could I not include the MST3K classic, The Final Sacrifice? It did get sort of low placement since Satan is just a dude in his suit with his voice pitched down ridiculously. Stubborn. And in my way. I'm also including the cult that's just dudes in ski masks. And it doesn't help that the whole movie looks like it was shot in someone's backyard. And here's the epic showdown between the hero and the villain. Oof. Zap Rousdower, you truly were too pure for this world. Splatting of rings all over this place! No, it's, as a matter of fact, we, we just escaped from him. 
The ones that they're marking on your shoulder there. It's a long story. We salute you, a half-inflated Dark Lord! Boy! Hellraiser is a creative and visually stunning depiction of demons on Earth and is one of my all-time favorite horror films. But much like every horror movie that made the slightest bit of money in the 80s, it quickly devolved into utter garbage. Hey guys, it's Hellraiser online. That won't ever seem dated. But my pick actually comes much earlier in the Hellraiser series, in Hellraiser 2 Hellbound. This is one of the better films in the series, although it's still a huge step down from the original. But the most disappointing element is hell itself. It just looks like a maze. In a franchise this inspired, hell should look like M.C. Escher on heroin, not M.C. Escher on Adderall. Maybe it's just because I was expecting so much more, but to me, this is one of the most bland hells ever put to film. Ghost Rider and Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Just like everything in this movie. I mean, Ghost Rider looks pretty good, and I dig Peter Fonda as the devil, but his replacement lacks something to be desired, and Ghost Rider pissing fire is really something. But probably worst of all is this pretty boy Twilight demon jump scaring no one in the middle of the desert. Fun fact, Satan the Bully's debut in the Video Brinkato video was written for a Ghost Rider review leading into the much worse Ghost Rider 2. You know, where it would have had some context. But I just didn't want to watch these movies again. That means I was more willing to watch Dingo movies than either Ghost Rider. Yeah, I don't have a high opinion of these movies. What if we have to pee while you're on fire? Oh, it's awesome. Here's a photo of the devil, and here's the super devil. Now, as you can see, there are some significant differences. I always love digging deeper into the lore of a universe, and Nightmare on Elm Street is ripe for the picking. And while Freddy's Dead The Final Nightmare is one of the most tonally confused movies I've ever seen, the darker side of the film got into some of Freddy's backstory. And all's going well until... What the fuck are those? Yeah, apparently these are the demons that gave Freddy his powers. They look like the evil version of Seaman, or like that sketch from Meaning of Life. It's uncomfortable to say the least. There were actually plans for Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer director John McNaughton to direct an Elm Street prequel about Freddy in hell between getting burned alive and coming back as a killer. But some other New Line movie about hell had just critically and financially bombed. Oh, what was that other movie? It'll come to me. While an Elm Street prequel in hell sounds cool, especially after the complete lack of hell in Jason Goes to Hell, if it featured these things, perhaps it's best it stayed in a worse place. Development hell. <laughs> That's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. We'll be right back. Gentlemen? Ah, oh, crap, singing. Mind if I smoke? Christmas and horror films are nothing new. Gremlins is probably the most famous example, but if you want a serial killer Santa movie, I'd recommend the superbly underrated Silent Night, Deadly Night. On the other hand, you could watch Santa's Slay. Get it? Santa's Slay? In this film, Santa, played by professional wrestler Bill Goldberg, is the son of Satan who challenged the Archangel Gabriel to a curling match. Yeah, this film's from Canada. That place where they consider curling a real sport. Santa loses and has to be good for a thousand years, but the bet is over and Santa is back to being a murderous demon. There's a winking self-awareness that frames Santa's sleigh which makes it less stupid, but I can't save how lame and kinda mean-spirited this film is. So, there it is. 
Santa is on the list. Oh, ho, ho. I am Satan! We're trying to figure something out here. Would you be a doll and hold that thought? Sorry. Devil is a movie about, what else? The Devil, slowly killing people one by one in an elevator. Seems like a massive waste of my time, honestly. And massive spoiler alert, it's this old lady. That's the twist. I'd use the Shyamalan is rolling in his grave joke, but Shyamalan wrote this. Not that this devil was ever particularly threatening, but the twist just destroys any credibility this film had. And that's all I gotta say. Moving right along now. It, it feels like something bit me. Faust sold his soul to the devil and in return became very rich and very famous. And Alice says that this is that kind of a contract. Really? Why do I sign? <laughs> I've got to get a pen. Hey, give me a pen. Look, and I'll give you a chicken for a pen. I'll give you all my chickens for a pen. I'll sell my soul for a pen. No, I have other plans for that. How are there two Christmas movies on this list? And how are there two Christmas songs on my Satanic Jams playlist? Says the guy who set this up with a Santa Claus parody. Mm, fair. You should all know my thoughts on Santa Claus. Oh wait, no. No, that's one of my least viewed videos. Santa Claus, not to be confused with THE Santa Claus, is a Mexican B-movie about Santa attempting to deliver toys despite the attempts of the devil's minion, Pitch. Yeah, I was kinda trying to avoid the generic, goofy-looking dude in a red unitard, but Pitch is so exceptionally pathetic, he's gotta make the list. Not only does he look cheap as hell, his one job is to corrupt children and turn them against Santa. Which sounds just as useful as killing random people in an elevator. And he only manages to convert three kids and mildly inconvenient Santa. Good work, you pathetic son of a pitch. <coughs> I mean, bitch. Uh-oh. A pair of scissors. Up there, there's so much room Where babies burn and flowers bloom Everyone dreams I could dream up there. Beast of the Yellow Knight. Never heard of Beast of the Yellow Knight? Well, neither had I. I was trying to watch the Tor Johnson classic Beast of Yucca Flats and accidentally watched this instead. And while I don't recommend it in the slightest, it does contain one of the funniest Satans in film. You're probably thinking, okay, let's see him, and you're looking at him. That fat Asian guy is Satan. Considering this film is Filipino, I'm sure something got lost in translation. Like this is some Filipino trickster god and the American distributor just said, eh, make it Satan. Whatever the case, it's one of the most wildly inappropriate Satans and the only funny thing in this ungodly boar fest. Your friend isn't coming, Langdon. She died of bullet wounds a while ago leaving a trail of canned beans and dried fish behind him. Turn down the lights. Crank up the volume. This is... The Great Satan. The Great Satan. The Great Satan. Spawn. Just all of it. There's embarrassing 90s CG, and then there's Spawn. There are Mario 64 villains scarier than this. And look, I know there are plenty of laughably bad Satans I missed, but none of them could possibly top this. Cheap Mexican or Filipino B-movies are one thing, but this film had a $40 million budget and is based on a beloved comic book. This is beyond unacceptable, but it's also really, really funny. You shouldn't be able to fuck up this bad, but there it is. The worst hell and Satan ever put to film. What did I miss? I know there's got to be plenty of terrible Satans out there that I just don't know about. I feel like there was one, though, from like a, a really terrible comedy, from like an infamous comedian. Why can't I think of that movie? Oh, would you look at the time? It's time to go down to level three and show them their Adam Sandler movie. All right, let's see what we got for them today. Oh. Oh. Oh, no.